China's annual sales of new energy vehicles grow from 1.367 million units in 2020 to 6.887 million units in 2022, a fourfold increase in two years. A new energy vehicle requires roughly 30 to 60 kilograms of lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. Lithium, a silvery white metal in its pure state, is 0.0065% in the Earth's crust and used to be industrial monosodium glutamate, but now it is white oil. According to China's manufacturing capacity in the field of new energy vehicles, China is bound to consume most of the world's lithium resources in the coming decades. Although China has 7% of the world's lithium resources, the grade is low and basically located in remote areas like Tibet and Qinghai, with poor infrastructure support facilities, difficult mining, and fragile ecology. For example, the largest lithium pyroxene mine in Asia, the Mathilka Lithium Mine, located in Sichuan, has not been able to achieve large-scale development due to various reasons. The growth in demand is bound to bring a surge in the price of upstream resources. In the face of soaring demand, how did the Chinese take control of lithium mining on a global scale, step by step? How many thrills and chills are there in this? And how much remorse? Let's watch today's video. In the last video, we talked about how China's new energy vehicle industry did not improve in 2013 compared to the previous year with sales of only 17,000 vehicles, and that although Tianqi Lithium took over Taylison, the price of lithium basically did not rise. In 2013, Lockwood's chairman asked Jiang Weiping to meet him in Singapore and offered to buy 49% of Taylison's shares at a premium, an offer Jiang could hardly refuse because it would not only allow Tianqi to pay off a significant portion of its debt, but also allow CIC to exit smoothly, a double whammy. The competition in the business world is really a good illustration, there are no eternal enemies, only eternal interests. At that time, Tianqi Lithium sold 49% of its equity to Lockwood and pledged another 51% for refinancing. Fortunately, in 2014 Tesla entered China, refreshing the Chinese domestic market's understanding of electric vehicles and driving the entire market. It's safe to say that if it weren't for Tesla, Taylison would probably be 100% American, and CIC took the opportunity to withdraw from the shareholder list, when not many people were paying attention to it at all, as if the whole thing had nothing to do with it. All things in the world seem to be coincidental, but with a certain inevitability. The more Mr. Jiang fought, the braver he became, the more he soon set his sights on another lithium giant, Chile's SQM, which owns Chile's Atacama Salt Lake, one of the three lakes and one mine in the lithium resources industry, with a lithium carbonate equivalent of over 45 million tons. The reserves and mining costs are superior to those of the Greenbush's lithium mine. Lithium compounds are generally obtained in two ways, one is lithium extraction from ores and the other is lithium extraction from salt lakes. SQM's Atacama Salt Lake is the world's largest lithium salt lake and is known as the diamond in the crown which is naturally on Mr. Jiang's mind. In May 2018, taking advantage of SQM's major shareholders touting, Tianqi Lithium increased its stake in SQM by 23.7% at a high price on top of its original 2.1% stake, becoming the second largest shareholder, with an overall transaction price of $4.266 billion, for which Tianqi was saddled with a huge debt of $3.5 billion with an annual interest of more than $1.5 billion. It is this huge amount of debt, almost let Ji and Wei Ping half a lifetime of efforts to go down the drain. Because the upstream expansion is too fierce, while the downstream demand for electric vehicles is still low, resulting in a global lithium carbonate price plunge after 2018, from a maximum of 180,000 yuan per tonne to more than 40,000 yuan before the 2020 epidemic. Many miners and lithium salt plants went bankrupt and closed. And Tianqi Lithium is a one year loss of 5.98 billion. The sluggish market also completely disrupted Jiang Weiping's plan. When he first acquired SQM, Jiang Weiping had planned to pay off his debts through a Hong Kong stock listing, but because of the low lithium prices, affect the valuation of the company and stopped. So Jiang Weiping had to set out on a journey to find money again, as he did when he acquired Taoisen in 2012. But unfortunately, this time there is no domestic company like CIC that is willing to help Tianqi Lithium. 
At a time when Tianqi lithium is in trouble, it is also the darkest moment of the global lithium resources on the eve of the explosion. It is lamentable that only very few people have seized this last opportunity to get on board. In China, Ningda Time Sun Yuchuan and Tianqi Lithium Jian Weiping, which is more dare to bet, is not easy to say, but at least Sun Yuchuan in Tianqi Lithium's darkest moment, and did not bet. In 2020, Tianqi Lithium, which was mired in huge losses, initially hoped to find a suitable strategic investor so that it would not have to sell its family assets. It is rumored that Jian Weiping started negotiations with many giants, including China National Color Group, Min Metals Group. Sichuan Energy Investment, and Ningda Times, the world's largest demander of lithium resources, but none of them followed, no one in the country is willing to help, cannot be blamed on each other. In fact, Jian Weiping's too strong gambling style has scared off many potential investors, and its A share market has also left a high level of reduction, low fixed bad reviews, once rumored that one of the conditions for a giant to make a move, is that Jian Weiping must be out of the game. The rumor was that one of the conditions of a giant's offer was that Jian Weiping had to get out. Ningda Times did not participate, then it may be related to its attitude towards lithium. Ningda Times has always believed that the price increase is only a short-term phenomenon, and that recycled lithium will be sufficient in the long run. In 2022 after the lithium price surge, Xin Yuchuan was still emphasizing at the Global Power Battery Conference that mineral resources are not a bottleneck for industrial development. Ningda Times had only one person in charge of mineral investments before 2017, not even a subordinate, and the main focus was on cobalt, which has much smaller reserves. However, current cobalt prices are half of what they were at their peak in 2018, but lithium carbonate is three times as expensive as it was at its peak in 2018. With no one to offer, Jiang Weiping could only play one last card, putting the green bushes lithium mine on the shelf and selling part of his stake in Taoisen. At the end of 2020, Jiang Weiping, who had exhausted strategic equity participation, a share fixing and debt financing, was forced to sell his assets to Australian miner IGO, which gave Tianqi $1.4 billion to pay off its debts, and in doing so, acquired a 24.99% stake in Taoisen and a 49% stake in a lithium hydroxide plant in Western Australia. With this deal, Tianqi avoided bankruptcy. The fat water eventually flowed to the outsider's field, which made many people in the industry feel pity. At the end of 2019, the price of lithium carbonate fell to 50,000 per tonne, many mines were urgently cooled off, and the Australian company Lake Resources could not even pay the wages of dozens of miners. On the verge of bankruptcy, they pinned their hopes on China and approached some head lithium material companies to sell themselves, but nothing happened. Finally, Lake Resources contacted a Chinese aluminum giant and offered 5 million Australian dollars for an 18% stake. From now on, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to bottom out, as Lake Resources owns a salt lake in Argentina with a lithium carbonate equivalent of 4.4 million tons and a market value of tens of billions. However, the deal was vetoed a week later. Three months later, the peak turned around and Lake received a $20 million investment from the Gates Foundation and other institutions, and then as the price of lithium carbonate rebounded, Lake gradually came out of the doldrums and got a long-term order from Ford earlier this year. In just two years, Lake Resources' share price rose from a low of 2.5 cents per share to a high of 2.4 Australian dollars, a 10,000% increase which was enough to make the Chinese party involved in the negotiations regret. In August 2019, Olita, which owns the Bald Hills mine in the Four Lakes and Seven Mines, defaulted on its debt and reorganized in bankruptcy. In October 2019, the Wajina mine, owned by Arbor, announced its shutdown. In October 2019, the Wajina mine, owned by Arbor, announced its closure, just two years after it went into production. By October 2020, with the four lakes and seven mines in the Pilgangora Mine Ultra Company bankruptcy was taken over, which is actually close to the lithium price rebound has been close to. This tragic liquidation, in the deep valley of the cycle has left the gold everywhere, but few people dare to pick up these bloody chips against the trend. Who would have thought that a few months later lithium prices would launch a super bull market, 
leaving tears of regret for those who failed to take the plunge. The volatility of resource prices, like life, is like the words of Chinese tycoon Jack Ma, how many people fall in the darkness before the dawn. This is the opening ceremony of Bakita Lithium Mine in Zimbabwe. This four and a half hour long online video conference attracted hundreds of investors. Previously, it was revealed in the media that BYD has thrown a lot of money and bought six lithium mines in Africa in one bite. For a time, Africa seemed to be a hotbed of lithium mining gold, a few years ago it was a different scene. In May 2016, Australia's Prospect Lithium Corporation, PSC, sent someone to China to look for money in order to develop the Arcadia lithium mine in Zimbabwe, and was introduced to the heads of Tianjin Beimo, Shintuan Mining, and Huayu Cobalt, all of whom were, without exception, rejected. At first $20 million went unclaimed, and after a few years, Arcadi had risen to $150 million when it wanted to sell again, and every week after that the price went up, and Fosion Group once offered $500 million to try to bid for it, but in the end it was sold to the more mining savvy Huayu Cobalt for $422 million. After the second half of 2020, China's domestic lithium carbonate prices have rebounded, and from 2021 onwards, the crazy speed up, stirring the lithium circle of fear, from then on, the willingness to buy mines at sea has become particularly strong, but when people open the world map to find mines, the geopolitical situation has long been different from before. After 2020, the global situation has suddenly changed, and the regulation of foreign investment in Australia has become exceptionally strict while the lithium resources of the three South American countries, Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia, have almost been divided up by China, Japan, South Korea, and the United States. And there is even news that Chile wants to nationalize lithium resources and the three South American countries want to form a lithium pack. As far as the eye can see, only the uncultivated virgin land of Africa remains. Pei Jenhua was the first to come to Africa to find the mine, the mysterious investor who took a stake in Ningda Times in 2015 made a big profit after Ningda's listing, and in 2018 and Ningda Times established a joint venture to produce lithium carbonate Tiani lithium to enter the upstream of lithium. At the end of 2019, Pei Jenhua wanted to take a stake in the Australian listed company AVZ Mining, but was rejected by the Australian regulator, but he did not die, and in early 2020, when the world was sluggish due to the epidemic and the AVZ share price fell to 4 Australian cents per share, Pei Jenhua managed to get a 9% stake in the listed company AVZ with a price of only 10.87 million Australian dollars, and the latter owns the largest lithium mine in Africa, Manono. The Manono mine is located in the interior of Africa, transportation conditions are very poor, road repair will cost $700 million to $1 billion and to build a 2 million tons per year processing plant next to the mine, according to the current price of at least $200 million. In addition, Manono is also involved in a cross-border equity litigation. The three parties are China's Sejin Mining, Australia's AVZ and the Congolese state-owned mining company Comunier. The lawsuit has reached the International Chamber of Commerce in Paris, there is no conclusion yet, but the arbitration results may affect the mine's production and sales agreement. In addition to Manono, some large African lithium mines have also been named in the competition over the past two years, and almost all of them have a clear Chinese background. Ganfeng took half of Gulamina in Mali, China Mineral Resources took control of Bakita in Zimbabwe, Huayu Cobalt took over Arcadia in Zimbabwe, and Kanlonda took a stake in Buguni in Mali. On the road of buying lithium at sea, Tianchi Lithium is the pioneer, and Wat Irma, Jiangta Electric, Huayu Cobalt, Shengshen Lithium Energy, Sichuan Yahua, BYD, Ningda Times are close behind. In the eyes of these investors, lithium is the white gold that symbolizes wealth, a race that requires a race to the bottom, in which the interests of all, converging with the interests of the industry, eventually explode with amazing energy. It also contains the dreams and reality, torment and desire, greed and struggle of each participant. All that is still going on. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.